want to show you now some more pictures of my life. I bought a house a few years ago, okay, and that's my backyard. There we go, my backyard, the pictures of my backyard. I have a small backyard, it's only a tiny area where there's some grass and some trees. And there's nothing wrong with the backyard, okay? I've got a little bit of grass area for my dog and that's, that's basically my backyard. But my friends, this wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to change my backyard and make it better. So, renovation time. I chopped everything down, okay? I made a big mess. Chopped trees down, took out big stones. I made a mess, look at that. I dug, my, dug up my complete backyard because I needed piping and that's me in the ditch. I ruined my backyard, okay? To renovate, you need to make mess. Does that make sense? You need to make sense before you make good. That's the backyard now, okay? That's the before and that's the after. And that's only about two weeks old. All the plants here will eventually grow nicely, but that's what it was and that's what it is. And I had to make a horrible mess to get there, okay? I mean, you've seen that mess. I was, that's me. And that's soil. And I had to dig up my whole yard to get a good result. Guess what we're going to do now? No, we're not digging. <laughs> renovation time, my friends. Renovation time. I'm now going to renovate your mind, your ways of doing things. From the ways you have been doing them to the new ways. Uh, but remember, there's mess. We have to make things ugly before we make them pretty. So right now, you're going to start to learn and you're going to feel uncomfortable because I'm going to ask you to do things that your mind is not used to. Right now, we're going to do an activity that's going to confuse you. Do you hear that? It's confusion time. <laughs> You're going to sit there with those non-verbal communication looks and go... <laughs> the time to be confused is now. Okay, we're going to do an activity now and I'm going to renovate your mind. I need to make a mess in there so I can group your mind in the way it needs to be so that we can learn more effectively. <coughs> I need to mess it all up so that I can make it clean again. Because right now you have an idea of what communication is, but it's not good enough to be able to teach you specifically. So we're going to do an activity. I need you all to get out a fresh piece of paper. Not a small piece of paper, but a nice piece of A4 paper. If you don't have one, put your hand up. Hand up, that's almost everybody. All right, Mumba will come and get us some paper. Joanna instructs students to take out a piece of fresh paper. She tells them to fold the paper so that there are two folds and three columns. She says they will keep coming back to the three columns, but for the moment, they will only be using one column. All right, have you ever done origami? Origami, do you know what origami is? Yes? What's, who, what's origami? Folding paper. Yes, the art of folding paper into pretty little things, although we're not going to do that pretty. Do you want to give me a pile? When you have your piece of paper, show me your piece of paper. That's it. A good teacher uses all these little skills to keep their class awake. You're non-verbally telling me that you're ready. Okay, keep it up so I can see who doesn't have theirs. Keep it up. Who doesn't have theirs? All right. Are we ready for origami? Yes. Hold your paper up like this. This is very, very difficult. So if you don't pay attention, and very simply, we're going to get this piece of paper, 
you're going to fold it so that there are three folds, two folds, roughly with the same size. See that? Very simple. And then make the crease nice. So that when you're finished, there are three columns. Can you see that? There are three columns. Help your friend out next to you. Have a look at your, what your friend's doing. Good. And show me your three. You've got two. David, can you, can you help her out with three? Now, you might hate holding your piece of paper up, but I love it because this is you non-verbally communicating to me that you've done it. And a teacher needs to know this. Otherwise, students miss out and they don't learn. And that's my fault. All right, everybody's got their three? Good. Okay, put it down. Keep this piece of paper safe because we're going to keep on coming back to this. And right now, we're going to use one section, okay? Not these two, but just one section. I want to introduce you to the most important thing you're going to learn all week. It's called the three M's. Don't write this on your paper until I tell you to write it. The three M's. That stands for matter, manner, method. Let's say it together. The first one is matter, manner, method. Again, matter, manner, method. What's the first one? What's the last one? What's the middle one? Good. We are going to focus on the first one, matter. These three M's, you're going to know exactly what they are by the end of tomorrow. You're going to know them that well by the end of tomorrow that you'll be able to teach them. Okay? That's how well you'll know them. Right now, they mean nothing to you. But by the end of tomorrow, you'll know exactly what these three M's are and you will teach based on the three M's. First one, though, is matter. Now, before I go on to matter... I need to give you a hint. Many people say to me, Joe, how are you going to help me when you leave? When you go back to Australia, how are you going to help me? Can I email you? Yes, you can email me. Can, you, can, you, can I call you? Yeah, you can call me. But I'm not always contactable. I need to give you a method that helps yourself when I'm not around. Okay? Many people say to me, Joe, is what I'm doing right? You need to ask yourself this question. Is what you're doing taking away or adding from what you're saying? Okay? When I'm writing on the board and I'm talking to the board, am I adding or taking away? Taking away. Can you see how you answer it straight away? You're going to know. This will be a theme that keeps on coming up all week. We'll keep on coming back to this, okay? You need to ask yourself, are you adding or taking away from what you're saying? You never want to take away from what you're saying. You always want to add to what you're saying, okay? Might sound confusing now, but remember this is the confusion time. This will keep on coming back. We'll keep on using this. Because you'll start asking me questions, Joe, can I do this? Can I do that? And I'm going to say to you, will that add or take away? You'll be able to give yourself your answer. This means you can teach yourself and help yourself when I'm not even there. That's good skills. Because I'm not going to be around all the time. But I need to equip you so that you're able to know what's the best way to do things. We're going to use this. So put this on hold, okay? Put this on hold. For now, we're going to use this sheet of paper. Are you ready to be confused? Yes. All right. At the top of this first column, write the word matter. M-A-T-T-E-R. Matter. All right. Now, this is when 
This is the time where we're going to do some reading and writing. This is when you're going to get confused. I want you to write down, when I say not yet, okay, what you think I mean by the word matter. All right? Now, before you write, I will not collect these bits of paper, okay? This is not a test. I won't collect them. I won't see what you write down. You don't have to spell things correctly. This is just for you. You need to write down what you think it is. I, I'll tell you now, many of you will, will write the wrong thing. That's okay. Remember, we're renovating. Okay, we're making a big mess in our head. We're getting things wrong before we can get them right. I need to see what you're making mistakes in before I can fix it. So write down anything that comes to your head. Don't copy your, the person next to you. Just write down what comes in your head. Then we will share some of the answers on the board. Now, I'll give you a hint, right? There's matter, there's manner, and there's method. Matter, you can pretend is verbal. Manner, you can pretend is nonverbal. Now, remember, m verbal is everything that comes out of your mouth, right? Nonverbal, <coughs> manner, is just body, right? So, what, give me an example of something that's non-verbal. Eye contact. Eye contact. Would you agree? Yeah. Good. It's, it's not coming out of my mouth, is it? But it's coming from my eyes and that's non-verbal, yeah? So, manner, if manner is non-verbal, then under manner you would write eye contact, okay? So, when I say to you, write down what you think manner is, you'll be like, eye contact. What else is another thing that's non-verbal? Nodding. Okay, good. Nodding. Who said that? Nodding, shrugging our shoulders, yeah? Good. So if I said to you, write down what you think manner is, you'd be eye contact, shrugging shoulders, nodding. Do you see what I mean? You write down all these things that you, you think are non-verbal. You have to do that with the verbal. All right? So you need to think, okay, What's coming out of here? Words? Oh, maybe I'll write that down. Words. What else? When you hear things, what are you hearing when you hear things? Now, you might be a bit confused and I can see that you're thinking, remember, that's okay. You're, you're allowed to be confused at this point. This bit's confusing. We just need to get out stuff out of our head. That's why you just need to write down stuff. It doesn't matter if it's wrong. I expect there to be wrong things. The only thing that you need to do is just write down what you think matter is. Okay? Any questions? You're going to get five minutes to write those things down. Questions? All right. You should be fine. No talking though. So I shouldn't hear talking because it's not a speaking activity. Five minutes... Whatever comes in your brain, write it down under matter. Okay? One yes, one question? Is it no, not specific at all to EE, friends. Everything we're doing here is not EE specific. It's just, what do you think matter is? That word, anything verbal, what do you think that is? Five minutes, and I'll call you in five minutes. Question? Think verbal of everything you hear. What are the things that you hear? That's right that down. That's all. Very simple. Don't try and make it any complicated. It's not complicated. Just all the things that you hear. When you hear things, what are you hearing? Five minutes. There is a five-minute break while students write on their papers. Ready? You're going to give me some answers now. Oh, yes. Who's going to give me the first answer? Something that they've written down. Wow, I'm very impressed by the way, team. You're all willing to give me answers. You're the most group that's willing to give me answers. Intention. Intention. All right, intention. Next, who else? Sound. Sound. Next? Pronunciation. Pronunciation. 
Wow, that, how am I going to spell that? Pronunciation. Okay. Next. Feelings. Feelings. Instruction. Instruction. Do you know, you're the only group that has given me answers without offering you a bribe. <laughs> really? I normally, at this point, I normally have to offer some form of bribe to, to get people answering. I'm very impressed. I thought, you are a rough crowd, but you are still a good crowd because you answer. But I feel so bad because I actually bring with me bribery tools in case I need to bribe. So why stop now is what I say. And I just think that I should bring out some bribery. The class calls out answers as Joanna writes them on the board. She breaks to show them prizes they will win if they continue to participate, including little stuffed koalas and kangaroos. So basically, who wants a koala bear? Oh, come on, no hands up? <laughs> Fine! Oh, <laughs> what a tough crowd you are! Lighten up, friends! Loosen up a bit, you know? It's okay! It's friends! You want a koala bear? Look at that! There you go. Alright, that's the only one you'll get without earning it. These are not, you have, this, this is not like grace. You have to earn and deserve these. This is not like grace. Do you, okay, this is a koala from Australia, okay? Now, if you, if you push his back, then his arms will open up and you can kind of, you know, like attach him to yourself like that because he attaches to a tree back at home, okay? And you just turn his head 180 degrees. Okay, <laughs> now the koala, here that's his boomerang. This is called a boomerang and what it does, not this one because this is a toy, <laughs> but the real one is you know, this big, it can be that big or that big. The Aboriginals, they throw it properly and what happens? It does, it comes back. You kind of do this and it goes <laughs> and then it comes back and you can catch it. I have thrown a boomerang many, many times and I can't get it to work, <laughs> okay? But anyway, so that's the little boomerang and this is your koala. Now, a bit of trivia for you. The koala, and you're not allowed to answer, Camille, because you probably already know the answer. This little fella, all right, he lives on the trees in Australia, on eucalyptus trees. And that's why you only find him in Australia, because that's the only place you'll find eucalyptus trees. And he eats the leaves on the trees, that's his food, and he sleeps. That's it, eats and sleeps. What a life, huh? Eats and sleeps for up to... 22 hours a day. Can you imagine sleeping for 22 hours a day? I'm telling you, this morning I felt like sleeping for 22 hours. All right, tell me, why does he sleep so long? This is not an EE question, mind you. <laughs> to digest his food? To digest, yeah, kind of, 22 hours. Tell me, what would make you sleep for 22 hours? Huh? Ooh, we do have a smart group on our hands. Dix thinks he's drunk or drowsy. Do you think he's drunk or drowsy? What type of alcohol was he drinking? <laughs> oh, maybe. Who thinks he's drunk or drowsy? Drowsy. Uh, drowsy? Yeah. Why is he drowsy? Because of the eucalyptus. Huh? Yeah. What a smart group. He's drugged. He's almost drunk. He's drugged. The eucalyptus leaves contains a sedative that makes him sleep. So he's drugged. He's on high for most of the day. And that's why the koala sleeps for about 22 hours. How is that? There you go. But if you come and visit me in Australia, I will promise to take you to pat the koala. But remember, because he's drugged, his eyes look like this. <laughs> and it's true, they walk really slowly on the trees. I mean. <laughs> but they're ever so cute. Do you like that? Yeah, okay. Who wants a koala bear? I 
Oh, look, now we've got our hands up. Yeah, you see, now you're alive. Yeah, as soon as I bring out toys, I've got chocolate as well. You want some chocolate? Oh, no, my hand goes up. Yeah, all right, now the, now the group comes up. All right, you give me a thing and I give you a bear. How does that sound? Noise. Oh, now you're screaming out the answers. <laughs> Good man, noise. Oh, bad throw. Okay, noise. Laughter. Laughter. Wow, look at all this. Everybody's alive now. See, bribery does work. Oh, wait a minute. Who said laughter? Who said laughter? Me, me. Koala bear for me. All right. Ooh. All right, wait a sec. All right. Huh. Now the class has come alive. Welcome, group. Yeah, okay. Who said questions? Questions. Ooh, this is a... Okay, ready? Oh, deflected there. Nice. Questions, emotions, who said emotions? All right. Who said information first? Who was it? Definition? Oh, wait a minute. Who's next? Talking. Oh, that was a horrible throw. All right. Guess what? You will have your chance to get a koala later on. <laughs> I'll just tempt you because, you know, I'm that girl. But there's more than koalas here. There are also kangaroos. I'm just going to pop that there for you. And there are other things that can be um, one. Wow. <laughs> now, you know how there's grace? in our gospel presentation, and grace isn't earned or deserved, it's just given freely. <laughs> These are not given freely. <laughs> <laughs> These are all earned and deserved. So I'm just going to, can I put them there to just tempt you a little bit um, of what are the things to come if you're a special student. Um, so, yes, and so our koala bear's here. So you'll get your chance to get a koala bear again. But who are the lucky people who got their koala bears? Who, hands up if you got koala bears already. You don't get another koala bear. <laughs> I know you want to collect them for all your children and all your family at home, but no, 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 no. Okay, one koala bear per person only, okay? All right, now we're going to start here at Fred, and we're actually going to go all the way back, all the way back. And each one of you are going to give me one thing to write down, okay? Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, I'm just going to write it down. Make sense? Okay, you, you just give them to me quickly, okay? So, Fred, go. <laughs> oh, I think that's laughing. Is that? Well done. All right, next. Faster. Your turn, Pewin. Next. Keep them coming. Next, come on, guys. Funny, fun, fun. Story. Quick, quick, quick. Singing. Come on. Story. Next. Ladies. Anger. Anger. Oof. Frustration. Frustration. Words. Words? Next. Uh, sorry? Uh, Ask. Uh, acting. acting, sorry, sorry. Uh, Rejoicing. Uh, huh? Affirmation. Affirmation. Gestures. 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 Sound? Next. Singing. All right, you got to pick another one. Music. Music. All right, no, that's good. Next. Parking. 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 Barking. <laughs> Dancing. 
Roof, roof, yeah, how are we? Yeah, okay. Dancing, sorry, dancing, dancing. Meowing? <laughs> Seriously? Message? Tone? Whistling? Wow. Whistling next from here around. Arrangement? Next. Intonation. Next. More worry. More worry. More Murmuring. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. You all got it. What's wrong with me? All right. <laughs> How do I spell it? Oh, murmuring. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. You know what that means. Hey? Whipping. Whipping. All right. Sorry, what was that? Babbling. Uh, babbling. Yep. Volume. Encouragement. Yep. Language next. Reflection. We done? Wow, we have 38, probably a few more up there, yeah? Well done, team. Well done. Very impressive. Very impressive. You, you again, you're, you're the quickest at, at doing this. I'm impressed. Well, we're going to find out the answers because most of them are wrong. <laughs> so much fun. You know what? It's really good, though, because you thought they were right, yeah? So, so the good thing is we're now going to clear our minds, get rid of an untruth and replace it with a truth, okay? Yeah, and, and, and I know you can probably teach well and preach well already, but the difference is being better, okay? And, and that's what we want you to do, be better than, than you were. And, and I'll be honest, every time I teach this, and I've been doing this a lot, I still get better and better. Okay, and, and I still learn things along the way. Even, even last night, I, w I was adding things to the PowerPoint presentation because you can always be better than what you are. That's what we're going to strive to do. So some of those are right, most of those are not. <coughs> All right? So I'm going to now show you what they are. We're going to then come back to this list and then be able to cross them off or on, Yeah. Then you're going to go in, keep that in, take that out, keep that in, take that out. Because in here is some matter, in there is some manner, and in there is some method. But right now you're all mixed up. And that's why we're doing this activity. So that we can create order and structure in your mind. And once you have that order and structure, you will perform better. And you will know what to do. Okay? So, this is good. And we're going to keep this on hold. Hold for a bit and keep this up here so that you can keep on looking back at it. But we need to actually know what matter is and is not. You ready for some answers? All right, good. Let's, let's have a look. All right, matter is everything that you say. So the biggest thing about what you say is Sorry, one. Oh, absolutely. We have a time out. Okay, friends. Now, remember earlier today I warned you and I said we're going to stick to the timetable. Do you remember that? Yes. Guess who didn't stick to the timetable? Me. All right. In sport, what's the signal for time out? Oh, yeah. I give you permission if I'm going over time to tell me time out. Okay. You're allowed to do that. We're working as a team, okay? And if my team's not telling me it's time out time, I'm not going to know because I can talk underwater. So, <laughs> so you need to tell me, Joe, time out. We, we need our break. So I'm sorry we've gone over. So it's 3.15 and you're supposed to have a half an hour break. I'll give you that, no dramas. So come back at a quarter to four. How does that sound? Okay, you still get your 30 minutes. Sorry? 
Uh, Roy doesn't want any breaks. He said, no, I know you did. No, that's okay. We have a break, but it's just an afternoon tea break. So you get a half an hour afternoon tea break, get a drink, get something to eat. Sound good? You can stay back. You don't have to go in for a break. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. I'll see you back at a quarter two. You can go. The class takes a break. Now, I want to teach you a skill. The first thing, you should do this the first time you come from back from a break, after teaching something, you must always do what we're about to do. And that is review the previous lesson, okay? Every time that there is a break, your brain is going to start to forget things because it wants to rest and it wants to think of the next thing that you're about to do. So it starts to forget. So what we have to do every time we come back from a break is review. And review doesn't take long, okay? We don't do it for half an hour or 40 minutes. We do it very, very quickly so it gets the brain moving quickly and it means that you remember it really, really well. And you might think tomorrow, oh, we've already gone over that stuff every time she comes back from a break. I know it already. That's what I need you to, that stage I need you to get to. You need to be at the point when you think, oh, I already know it. That's when you've learnt it. Sound good? Yeah. So we're going to do revision and it's going to be fast, okay? So how many M's are there? Three. Show me three. That's right. How many? Visual. Show visuals. That's right. There's three. Good. What's the first one? Mouse. Second one? Mouse. Third one? Mouse. What are the two types of communication that we have? Verbal. Wonderful. Verbal, nonverbal. Why do we want to be more effective at communicating? Remember. Remembered. Well done. How many different retention methods are there inside the learning pyramid. Wow, look at that. Look how much you already know. What's at the very top? Lecture. What's right underneath? Give me two that's inside. Demonstration. Reading, discussion, audio, visual. Well done. Okay. And... What is the most popular form of communication? The most used? Nonverbal. Non How much do we do nonverbal communication? About 90%. Well done, team. You know that already. And you didn't look at your books, you just gave me the answer straight away. That means you're learning. That's effective learning. Yes. And a koala sleeps three, two hours a day. And a koala sleeps three, two hours a day. <laughs> Well done, you learned the most important part. <laughs> well done, Chris. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a koala, Chris? No. Well, I think that deserves a koala. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the namesake of the poor koala, and this, this time you get, a, you get a, a flag. Well done. Well, we've done our revision, that's out of the way. And when you do your lesson plans, on Thursday and Friday, you'll know, okay, they've had a break, it doesn't matter what the break's for, whether it's for food or because it's the end of the day. When they've come back from the break, revise. Really quick and it's lively, it gets all the class involved and then we move on. Sound good? Okay. What were we learning just before our break? Say it loudly. Well done, you've got it right. We were learning about matter. We've put up here what we think matter is, but now we're going to learn what it actually is so that we can clean up this little board. First, do you want to add one more? How about you give me one more? Matter is content, what you want to get across. That is good. It includes all content and information, okay? When you are teaching, all the stories, all the content that you say is under matter, okay? All of that is under matter, all of the content and all the information that you actually say. So the fact that I said koalas sleep for 22 hours a day 
that's matter, okay? How I said it, that's not matter, all right? Manner. That's manner, correct, very correct. The information, they sleep 22 hours a day, that's matter, okay? Yeah. How I said it, where I was standing, if I was loud or not loud, that's not matter. Can you see the difference? So, when it comes to EE, we have a lot of illustrations, don't we? We have the record book of sin. What else do we have? The gift. Egg illustration. The Garcia story or Shamil. The boat, the rotten egg. We have a lot of these, don't we? The information and the content, that's matter. How we teach it, how we express it, that's manner. See the difference? Both are very important. But we need to know the difference. Okay? We need to know the difference. Because sometimes you can have really good matter, but your manner isn't any good. Do you remember the picture I put up of, of the graduation and how everybody was asleep? I was listening to that man, okay? And what he was saying wasn't bad. It was actually good. So his matter was good. But his manner was very bad. Okay? So it's important that we remember that. And I'll show you how that works in the future. Another thing matter is, is all your stories and illustrations. Okay? When... We teach, we have a lot of illustrations, that's matter. When you're preaching and you might be telling a story, that's matter, okay? I was telling the story about Jade, wasn't I? The story was matter. But when I was starting to use gestures, what is that? That's manner. You see the difference there? It's important to know the difference. All your stories and all your illustrations, they matter. And if you remember the learning pyramid, the checklist I gave you. Somebody have a checklist? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mama. Here, I've written story. Okay? That means that I expect a story from you within your teaching. Okay? It's matter. And what's next to it? Personal. Okay? Personal stories. Personal stories work the best, my friends. I've already shown you my backyard, haven't I? And I've shown you pictures of my mum and my sister and my little nephew. And when it's personal, you get more involved. It would have been different if I put a picture of just a little boy that I didn't know, that I found in a magazine. It would not have had the same effect, would it? As soon as I start to share personal stories, I am making a connection with the other person. It's breaking down barriers and making a bond. You all have personal stories of why you're here. You all have stories of why EE has affected you. <coughs> Friends, you don't have to be sitting here for six weeks, but you've, you've chosen it. God has called you to be here. You have a story attached to that. You've chosen to do EE. You could have chosen to do a different evangelism tool or a different ministry, but there is a reason why you're doing EE. There's a story behind that. And you need to share those stories because it breaks down barriers. Once you start telling stories that are not related to you or things that you don't know about, people won't, won't listen as much. But as soon as you say, I want to tell you a story about my family. I want to tell you a story about me and what happened to me. Then you're going to want to listen and you're going to be more willing to share about yourself because we've broken down some barriers. Does that make sense? So I'm going to share a story with you now. I started EE back 
like I said, when I was 17 years ago, I started EE. Yeah, I know, I am old. I, I, I'm, I'm older than I look. <laughs> and this is what used to happen. We would get a team of people, 20 or 30, and Rod's story would take us to a country and we would do EE clinics in those countries. Uh, in fact, some of the first countries we went to were Fiji, Fiji Islands and the Vanuatu as well. And we would do two weeks, uh, two, two weeks we'll be away. Uh, we do two separate clinics each time. And in the middle of each clinic, we'd provide a free music concert. So we would bring with us drum kit and guitars and all this music equipment. And what would happen is usually in the middle of the week, we would put on a concert and just play music. It was free, anybody could come and see it. In the middle of the concert was an intermission. And just before the intermission, we would get one of our team members to come up and give their testimony. And at the end of their testimony, ask the two diagnostic questions. Then we would have the intermission. During the intermission, the EE team were to go out to all the people listening and just sit with them and say, look, did you hear those two questions? What are your answers? And that's how we would start going into the gospel presentation. And we're very successful and led many people to Christ. This happened, the story I'm about to tell you happened on the island of Santo. So where are my knee vans? You know, Santo, is there, is some, is there anybody here from Santo? It's, it's happened in Santo, yeah. You, Okay, you know there's a park in Santo, I don't know if it's still there, but there's a park right in the middle of Santo and that's where we had our concert. Well friends, this is what happened. Every year I would go on this missions trip for EE and it would take two weeks and that is all the holidays I'd have when I was working. So I'd work, I'd take the two weeks off, go and do missions with EE, come back and go straight to work. And I had been doing it for many, many years. Every time I went on mission, I'd get sick. Really badly sick. <laughs> just like your wife, yeah. I'd, I, does Camille remember? Yeah. Camille and I, we grew up together and Camille was on some of these trips and she's nodding. Why are you nodding, Camille? Because she's always sick. <laughs> <laughs> she, I was, I was just always sick. I was the one that was gonna get sick on the team, right? And. I had gone on a few trips and to be honest with you, I was sick again in Santo and I had had enough. I just, I had had enough. I had enough of going on mission, I had enough of EE, I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I had said to God, you know what Lord, this is it. I'm not doing EE anymore, this will be my last trip. <laughs> I know, you tell God what to do, huh? I'm, I'm telling God what to do. I said, God, I'm not doing it anymore my last trip and it's my last OJT. <laughs> I'm not doing any more OJTs and it's the last concert. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sick of being sick and I hadn't seen somebody to come to Christ in years. Everybody, you know, they go out on OJT and they come back with all their numbers. I spoke to this many people. I led this many people to the Lord and I was always zero for me. I spoke to 10 people, none came to the Lord. I spoke to three people, none came to the Lord. <laughs> And I was disheartened. And I said, Lord, that's it. Well, Wednesday night, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday night came and we had to do the concert again. I was full of the flu. I was sick and I did not want to go to the concert. <laughs> but we had to go to the concert. We all gathered around together in the team. And I don't, were, you, were you at that trip, Camille? I was in Santa twice, so probably. You were on that trip, I think. We all gathered together and Camille will remember this. We always used to pray the same thing. Lord, prepare the hearts and the minds of those who are about to hear our message. Ring bells. Prepare them, Lord, for what they're about to hear. So I remember standing there and praying, oh, Jesus, prepare them for what they're going to hear. They're not going to hear it, but prepare them anyway. That was my prayer. <laughs> you could tell... I so we did the concert and we had the intermission. Somebody had shared their testimony and we had to go out and we had to talk to people. Well, I'm walking and I'm trying not to make eye contact with anybody in case they want to talk to me because I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> and I keep on going almost to the end of the crowd. 
right? And then I see this knee van just smile at me with these beaming teeth. And I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to sit and talk to them. <laughs> so I kind of sat down and, hi, how are you? Good, good. And she introduced me to her, she had her three children there, I think it was the sister. And I went, so did you hear the two questions? I'm thinking, here we go. Again, she's going to listen to the gospel and again, she's going to say no to Christ. And you know what her answer was? I've been thinking of those questions for weeks. I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We just asked those questions just now. She goes, I have been thinking of those same two questions for weeks. I said, but how is that possible if you just heard those questions now? I know. Rod Story, he's the leader of our group. And I pointed him out. And at that time, he had hair and it would grow and he would shave it, the whole thing, he'd shave it off to raise money for the trip, the missions trip. So he was really bald. And I said, you see that bald white man over there? He, he was here actually a few weeks ago. He was preparing for us to come. And he was talking to churches. He must have come to your church and he asked those two questions. That's what he does. So is that how you heard those two questions? And you know what she said to me? White man has never been to my church. She says, I live three hours away and I walked down because I heard there was a free concert. I said, but I don't understand. If, if Rod hasn't been to your church and it wasn't here that you heard those two questions, how did you hear those two questions? Her answer was, I just woke up one morning and I asked myself those questions. Friends, God put those questions in ahead. God prepared the hearts and the minds of those people who were going to hear the message. Do you remember that prayer? That's what we prayed. And here am I thinking that oh, there's no way she could possibly know that, let those questions unless some human, some person has come and spoken to her. Of course God can put that in her head. And he was doing what we had prayed for. He was preparing her weeks before we got there for that message, for that day, for me to come and talk to her. And I went through the gospel presentation with her and led her and her sister and her three kids to Christ. And I went back to the hotel and cried. And even when I tell it today, I still get goosebumps because... <clears throat> I'm still doing EE, aren't I? Yeah? It was like God said, Joe, what are you thinking? Do you really, I don't need you, but I choose you. It's your honour to be doing this for me. And I do prepare the hearts and the minds of people before you. And, and they needed you to hear the message. Don't, don't ever give up on what I'm doing. Just because you're, some, you're sick and just because you've been doing it for a while and no one's, no one's made a commitment, they made a commitment more genuine than 20 people that, that just make a commitment and forget about it the next day. I have a photo and I tried to find it before I came here, but I'm sorry I couldn't find it. That was years and years ago and I had really short hair. <laughs> but I have that photo and that photo I look at regularly to remind me that God goes before me and prepares the way and that we, we are honoured to do the work for him. That's a story I share with you. And I'll never forget her and I'll never forget that time at Santa. It's a truthful story that happened to me. I share it with you and you're sitting there and you're listening and you're non-verbally communicating with me. Can you see why personal stories work best? Okay? Personal stories will touch, will touch someone's heart and they mean more. I share that story with you so that you understand the emotions and the feelings that are involved when you're sharing a personal story. It's also much easier to use your gestures when you're telling something that's so dear to you. You're not putting on an act. You're not trying to perform. It, it's personal and so the audience feels that personal story as well. So when it's time for you to tell stories, I know you can tell 
stories about all different things and all different places, but I know you have personal stories. Those are the ones I prefer to hear. If I only get to hear one, I want to hear a personal one. Does that make sense to you? All right, good. We can move on from there. Matter is also all the words that you use. Everything that comes out of your mouth. All the words that you use. And I need to say, the words that you use need to be simple for the people to understand. They cannot be too difficult. Some words need explanation. And when you're teaching and preaching, you need to resist using Christian words like, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, the blood of the lamb is laid upon you. <laughs> Can you imagine if you said to a non-Christian, the blood of an animal is going to be wiped all over you. Does that sound tempting to you? No. no, it doesn't. I'm going to go out there and kill a pig and just wipe the blood all over you. We have to be careful that when we speak to people, that we're using language that doesn't offend them and that they understand. For example, friends, Garcia, we know what Garcia is, don't we? The Garcia or the Shamil illustration. Who, who uses the, the term Garcia? Hand, hands up. All right, who uses Shamil? Not everybody's hands up. What do the rest of you use? In the, in the God illustration, what do you use? Remember in the army, leading a, a group of army? Okay. So when I used to say that, I dropped it off mine when I was feeling too dirty to speak to anyone. Okay, so you use, what do you use, Pillin? Okay. The big man who took his group into the bush. That's fine. So we have, I mean, that, that works, doesn't it? it? It works in PNG. Okay, and, and in where in the Philippines, Garcia works, doesn't it? And that's a, and that's a name that, that resonates. With, Filip with Filipinos and Latin Americans. I mean, in the West, we use Shamil. Um, that was the Russian name. So it, it doesn't matter which one you use. The thing is, if you tell your students Shamil or Garcia, or if you say to them the rotten egg skit, record book of sin, they don't know what that means until you explain to them the meaning. Do you understand? I can say, I've got two questions for you and you're going to laugh. If I say, can I ask you two questions, you'll know straight away that that's EE, right? That's because we're EE trained. But a non-EE person doesn't know that. The two question marks, if you see two question marks, then what does that represent? <laughs> two diagnostic questions. If you show that to someone that's not EE trained, they have no idea that that means the two questions, the two diagnostic questions. They don't know. So we have to be careful, even when we're teaching, not to assume that the students know what these phrases and words mean, because they haven't, they, they haven't been taught them yet. So when we use words, we have to ask ourselves, does the audience know what that word means? When I was younger and growing up, I was a part of a debating team. So you have two teams, and you get a topic, and one team has to fight and agree with it, and the other team fights and, and doesn't agree with it. And that's, and that's a debate that they have. One particular debate, we had a topic. The topic was that Coke is it. That's the topic. That Coke is it. One team had to say Coke is it. It's good, it's great. The other team has to say Coke is not good, Coke is not great. Now... Our audience were aged between 60 and 75 years old. <laughs> they were Rotarians, you know, rot Rotary people, Rotary or Lions clubs. So they were about 60 to 75 years old. Now, that phrase, Coke is it. We have to give a definition for the word Coke. What is Coke? 
Coke is it? What do you think Coke is? A drink? A drink? Yeah, Coca-Cola, isn't it? Yeah. And, and Coca-Cola used that slogan, Coke is it, in their marketing, to be the drink to drink. And that's what my team decided Coke meant. It meant Coca-Cola. And we were saying that Coca-Cola tastes nice, it gives you a good feeling, you should have a lot of it. The other team defined Coke differently. What else does Coke mean? It's a drug. It's a drug. What drug is it? Cocaine. Cocaine. Can you imagine? One team is saying it tastes good, it makes you feel good, you should have more of it. And then all these Rotarians are sitting there listening to us just going, these horrible children of today, they just, oh, they're different. We were young and so we took it as meaning Coca-Cola. The other group took it as cocaine and so did the audience. They thought that when they grow up, grew up, Coke is it wasn't a slogan they were familiar with. That's only familiar to my generation. So they thought Coke meant cocaine. Same word, two different meanings. We have to be careful when we teach that our meanings don't get misinterpreted. When I teach in the country in Australia, it's very different than teaching in the city. I once went to a school and I was talking about surfboards and I live next to the ocean and a lot of people go surfing. And I was telling them about a surfboard a boy had. And he had a filthy surfboard. It was sick. A sick surfboard. Does that mean it has a disease? What does it mean? Yeah, it's great. It's a good surfboard. But he used the word sick and filthy. Do you know one of the country kids said, why don't you clean it? <laughs> clean the surfboard. They don't surf, they don't use that term, they couldn't understand it at all. If I have a pen, and this pen is cool, this is a cool pen, does that mean that this is whew, whew, cool? Or does it mean this is great, this is a really good pen, hey? Because if my nephew was here and I said to him, honey, this is a cool pen. He'd say, oh, give it to me. I want to use it. But if I said to my mum, who's in her 70s, mum, I have a cool pen, she'll say to me, why? Did you put it in the fridge? Or what have you done with your pen? <laughs> okay? So we have to make sure that when we use words, we use the appropriate words. And I know that when you go back to your villages and your country, you know best what your country and your people group respond to. But when we're here, especially next week and week five, you're going to be teaching predominantly Fijians. Some of those might be Fijian Indians, and we're also teaching each other. So you have to make sure that your language fits in with their language, yes? Okay, I wore thongs yesterday, but in America, they're flip-flops. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Roy, okay? Does that make sense? So when you're teaching, and I might say to you, I don't understand your words, then I'll be saying, you need to improve your matter. I'm not saying you're a bad communicator, I'm just pinpointing that part that needs improvement so you know now how to improve it, yeah? Just think of a sickness. This is the problem, this is the medication. The sickness is you're using the word that I don't understand. Medication, change the word. Use a, a different word or a simpler word. Does that make sense? Yeah. We can use what's also called euphemism. And a euphemism is a nicer way of saying something. For example, when someone dies, what do we say? What, what can we say? Gone home. Gone home. I like that. Exactly right. Jesse might come up and say, Joe, 
your pet dog has gone home to Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll say, say that's the case. And you know what? Only six months ago, we had one of our workers who went home uh, during one of our teaching sessions. Uh, he had diabetes and he went home. Now, when Rod had to ring up his wife and give that news, how was a very, what was a nice way to give that news? Can we help her out? Passed on. Passed on, yeah? Passed away. Rod said, look, I'm sorry, but he's passed away. He's, he's gone to be with Jesus, yeah? We don't say, he's dead. Kick the bucket. <laughs> it's all over for him now. Sorry? Who gets to breathe? Who gets, oh, to breathe. That's right. <laughs> There's a nicer way of saying things, okay? You're going to hell. You'll be condemned in the fire. That's not the best way to tell somebody that they're not going to heaven, <laughs> okay? We have to be careful when we talk to people that we use the right words. When you're teaching, I'm going to be looking and hearing what you're saying. That's the wrong words. Or you need to phrase it differently so that we understand. So then I'm able to say, your matter needs improving, right? Your matter might be great. Your, your manner, sorry, might be great. Your method might be great. But here's an area that needs improving. Can you see what I mean? So we're able to target what needs improving and then fix that. So words you use are all matter. How you say the words is not, right? He has passed away. The words are matter. I'm sorry, he's passed away. How I said it is manner. Make sense? Okay, so the M's now, our three M's are, are taking a bit more shape, aren't they? We're, we're, we're putting more form into them as we're slowly understanding what they are. You're not going to understand all of what they are until the end of tomorrow, but they're going to slowly start taking shape. Yes, a question. Uh, um, you just said something a while ago. How you say does not matter. <laughs> you picked me up on that. That's just a how I say it doesn't matter. The word matter is used sometimes with what's the matter? What are you doing? What's the matter? It's the wrong use of the word matter in that phrase. It's the wrong use of the word. We have used it in our daily lives incorrectly. But how it's here is correct. There we go. So we've just taken it and it's like cool. Cool doesn't mean great until we make it great, right? Cool, the technical term of cool is cold, right? Okay, so that's, you wouldn't say this is then a cool pen if, you, if it was cold. You'd say it's cold pen. And if it was a great pen and really good to write, you'd say great pen. If you're with a class full of maybe five-year-olds or ten-year-olds, you could do that. If you're with a class with older, more distinguished people, you would be using different language. Make sense? Yeah. I think we've got that point. So, the words we use and the definitions that we use for those words, okay? The definition... I had to give you a definition of the learning pyramid so that you understood that. And you will sometimes have to give definitions of words when you explain them as well. The other very important thing, questions. The questions that you ask is a part of your matter. And as teachers, you need to be able to know how to ask good questions. You might be sitting here and thinking, I can ask questions. I ask questions all the time. The biggest fault that a teacher does when asking questions is answer the questions themselves. Because all of you here, I love you all, you're great friends, but it's comfortable just sitting there. And especially in the afternoon, you might be tired and when I ask a question, you're just going to want to sit there. And you're not going to have to, you don't want to answer. 
So I have to bring out lollies and koalas and I have to speak louder and wake you up so that you answer a question. As a teacher, you need to know how to get the answer out of a student and you, know, you need to know how to ask the right question in order to get the right answer out of somebody. So we are actually going to do that now. We're going to ask each other some questions based on open and closed questions. Friends, there are two types of questions. How many? Two. two. Do you know what they're called? <laughs> That's right, I just gave it. Open, closed questions. Open and closed questions. What is a closed question? A yes, no answer? Is there anything more than just a yes, no answer? Come on, friend. See, you're not answering me. Come on. What is your name? Do you want to give more of an explanation? What is a closed question? It does not explain. Doesn't explain. Specific directed to a person. A specific directed to a person. What else? What else? One answer. One answer? Okay, good. Closed question gives a closed, simple, short answer. Okay? For example, how are you? I am fine. Are you hot or cold? Hot, cold. Okay? It's more than just yes or no, but it can be yes or no. Do you want to be here? Yes or no? Yes, no. So it is when you get a short answer. Okay? What's an open question? Explanation. Okay, you want to explore more? Questions that are robot, when, why, how, where? Very good, thank you. They are questions that require a bigger answer, okay, basically, and we'll get to that soon. Open question gives an open answer. Closed question, closed answer. If I come up to Jesse and say, Jesse, did you understand that? Jesse can go, yeah. Can also go, no. But if Jesse says, yes, then as the teacher, I'll go back thinking, great, that's a yes. But I don't really know if it's a yes. Because I didn't test you. But if I say, do you understand the learning pyramid? Yes? Yes, I do. Explain to me the learning pyramid. Then I really find out if the learning pyramid has been learned. Correct? Now you might think it's simple, all right? Yeah, that's good, Joe. I've, I've, I get it. Open, closed, good, good. Okay, fine. But every time I usually ask people to give me open or closed questions, they can get confused. So we're going to do an exercise now where you are going to ask me open questions and you're going to ask me closed questions. It will take a little bit of time because we have a lot of people, we might have it. But first activity is you just ask me a closed question. Okay, that's the first thing. Everybody will do it. So we're going to start here, Cassandra, we're going to go through. And then when we finish, we're going to start here because we always usually end here, don't no. Do we always start here? We end here, so we're going to start here and then go here. You can't ask me the same question that somebody else has already asked me, but it's got to be a closed question, okay? Everybody gets uncomfortable now when I ask them to do something. <laughs> it was easy when you were just nodding and shaking your head. But now it's your turn to give me an, a closed question. All right, ready? Cassandra. How many times have I been... Good, because I can just give a number. And to be honest, I've lost count. Don't know how many times now. What colour is the floor? What colour is the floor? Red. Good. Can you see just short, simple answers? Next. Are you married? <laughs> Am I married? <laughs> I always get asked this question. <laughs> There's three top questions I get asked, and that's one of them. That's what, the answer is no. <laughs> it always starts with that question first. Are you married? Next. Do you like teaching? Do I like teaching? Yes. Where do you live? I live in Australia. What part of 
A long way away. <laughs> What's mine? That's okay. What's your surname? What's my surname? Metasic. Do I feel cold? Not at the moment. Do you feel cold? No. No, it's good. How much time? What time is it? What time is it? Good question. It is 25 past four. Yes. See, it's harder than you think, isn't it? That's okay. I'll come back to you. You ready? No. no, I'll come back to you. Who's the toughest student you've ever had? Who's the toughest student I've ever had? You, my friend. <laughs> 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 You're my man. <laughs> Thank you. Over here. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Have you ever ice skated? Have I ever? Skated on ice. Skated on ice? <laughs> yes, I've fallen on ice. <laughs> I don't know if I've skated, but I've fallen. Dog's name is Mindy. How long will I be here? One week. Do I like my job? Yes. I need to say yes, don't I? <laughs> this, is on, this, is, this is recorded. <laughs> my favourite drink? Coca-Cola. Coke is it. Who's my hero? Well, I'm a Christian, so I have to say God. But apart from that, I mean, Nelson Mandela, actually, yeah. What am I doing? I'm teaching you, Mass. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's actually a bit of an open question because I can spend a bit of time explaining that, yeah? Now, I'll make the note here. Really introverted people who don't want to talk or just generally people who don't want to talk, they're just going to give you a closed answer all the time, okay? And those people who really love to talk, even if you ask them a closed question, they're going to turn that into a very open answer, you know? You know, are you hot or cold? Well, I was hot an hour ago, but now I feel a little bit cold and later, okay? That, but this is generally speaking for the majority of, of the people. Next one. What's the weather in Australia? It's getting cold. Ah, oh, and that's the second question. <laughs> there we go. It came. Almost finished. You've got, you've got like, it's your chance to get the third question. Ah, oh, how old I am. I will answer you because I'm always asked. Okay, guess. Yeah, come on, you asked me the question. So you, 28? God bless your heart. <laughs> No, you got to add about oh, seven years to that. I am to four, who said 47? <laughs> oh, we're from 28 to 47 in 20 seconds. <laughs> no, 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 add seven. <laughs> I'm th turning 35 in two months' time. There you go, there you go. So I'm 34 at the moment. There you got it out of me. Well, yeah, I, I'm happy with the 28. My father's name is Joseph. How long did it take you to travel from Australia to Fiji? It took me four hours, four and a half hours. You love islanders? Yes, I do. <laughs> That's almost close to the third question. <laughs> uh, how many population is Australia? We're up to 24 million, I think, now. 24 million. Sorry? What, what is my favourite sport? Uh, I'd have to... Tennis now, tennis. Do you like chocolate? Yes, I like chocolate. He bribed the teacher earlier on, I'm just letting you know. And I'm open for more chocolate offerings. If you <laughs> Sorry? When is my birthday? 26th of July. Your favourite dish? Favourite dish? Oh, chocolate is not really a dish, is it? <laughs> Spaghetti. <laughs> Yeah, I do actually. I do. I don't mind it. Do I like? Yes, I do. I think I've been to Vanuatu about three or four times. 
How tall am I? Haven't had that one. I think I'm 165 centimetres tall. Can I swim? Yes, not well though. How many languages do I speak? I speak English, I speak Australian, <laughs> and when I go to America, I try to speak American. So that's three. <laughs> Otherwise, I speak Australian and broken Macedonian. You know what? We're at the last closed question, and I always get asked the same three questions everywhere I go. Oh, I've been asked two of them, and I don't know if you're going to ask me that special third question. Fred? Oh. Do you have a diary? Oh, that's okay. He didn't ask me. He wasn't going to. Do I have a diary? Yes. Well done, team. Do you want to know the third question? Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. It's always um, along the lines of Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> or Do you want to get married? <laughs> oh, I missed that one. That was your question. <laughs> Do you have a koala bear? <laughs> well, really, was that your last question? Yeah, yeah, well, it, it happened. There you go. Wow. Well, the answer is uh, no, I don't have a boyfriend and no, I'm not married. And, <laughs> and yes, I would like to be married one day. So there you go. Well done, team. You did your clo open closed questions very well. Yeah, give yourself a bit of a clap. <laughs> nice. Well, you know what we're going to do now, don't you? We're going to now do open questions. Every one of you has to give me an open question. I'm not going to answer every one of them because obviously it will take too long. But now it's a little bit harder with an open question. I'm going to prepare my board because we need it. What we're going to do is we're going to, we ended with Michelle. So we're going to start with Michelle. So we're going to start all, we'll start with you and go around and then We'll go here and we'll end up with Dix. <coughs> All right. First question, open question. Um, is that supposed to be uh, like you have to explain your answer? Correct. So okay. you need to ask me a question that requires me to give more than just a one or two word answer. Wow, that's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not answering all these questions because that's one of the greatest questions that we, we all ask. Yeah, okay. If God knew that man was going to fall, why did he create man? Good open question. So, well done. Okay. That's a closed question, yeah. Um, and it's, it's important that, that, that you use that what. The word what leads toward a closed question, okay? What is the weather like? What degree did you do? And then I can answer it by saying communications or theology and end it very, very quickly. Does that make sense? So it doesn't, it's not the best word to start an open question with. We'll learn some more as we go along because you'll, you'll tell me then. So we'll go next. So is, is, is Joanne able to ask a question? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. What do you think about? It's a good question. I'm going to put it on hold for a minute. We're going to come back to it. Because as you give me more questions, you understand why I come back to this question, okay? So we're going to keep this on hold for a minute. Is that, is that okay? All right, we're keeping this on hold for a minute. So good, we're going to come back to that. Kata? All right, good. How did... All right. The word how, 
I can say by boat. Closed answer, yes? What we're going to start to find is the, f the first word you start your question with will make the difference of whether or not it's an open question or a closed question. And that word how can usually is used if that can be used as an open or a closed. How did your parents come over by boat? How does this computer work? I need to explain more, don't I? Yes? That word how is tricky. And we must be careful how we use that word because it can be used as a closed question. So if somebody doesn't want to talk, they'll, they'll answer that real quickly, boat. By boat, closed question. We'll find out as we go along how we could re-ask that question so that it becomes an open question. Your turn. Again, I'm going to put that on hold for a minute with that word what. We'll come back to it. Roy. That's okay. Um, I don't need to. Yeah. Um, what led you to get it, um, what led you to, to study communication at university? Okay. Again, we're going to put that there. No more what. If you have a question that starts with a what, no more. You don't have to change your question, okay? Don't use what at the beginning anymore. Why is this ministry mission then so important to you? Good. Why is ministry so important to you? That word, why. It doesn't matter what comes after this. Why is ministry important to you? Why do you like chocolate? Why is your name Joanna? Because I've used the word why, I need to do some explaining, okay? I need to explain. And that means I can't give a closed answer. I have to use a lot of words to explain it. So straight away, that becomes something I need to talk about. Now, Sandra could have said, do you like teaching? That's a closed question, yes, no. Why do you like teaching becomes an open question. Can you see the difference there? Yeah. It's very subtle, but it's in the word that you use at the very, very beginning. If you start a sentence with the word why, it means that you require more explanation. It turns it into an open <laughs> question. Jesse. Wow, you've been preparing that question. <laughs> good, you've used why again. All right, very good. Vic. Um, why is communication included in our course? <laughs> <laughs> it's always the quiet ones, you know. They sit there and then they come out with something like that. <laughs> so you can learn more effectively. <laughs> okay, good. That's an open question. Nobody else can use why anymore. All right, I'm not letting you use why anymore. Good stuff. Tell me your life story. Good. Do you see that, everyone? Tell me. Tell me your life story. It means I have to do some explaining. I have to use more words when I say, tell me. Next. Okay, coming back to how. No, 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 that's okay, because remember, you can use how in both ways, okay? But it is a, a touchy word, okay? How did I make that cake? I cooked it. There's another word we can use, but I don't want to tell you. I'm waiting for somebody else to tell me. So maybe Dick's will. Yay, okay. 
Can you see? So you don't have to use how. Instead, you can say, explain how you cooked the cake. Explain primary school, yeah? Rather than, you know, how do primary schools work or what do you think about primary schools? Explain your feelings about primary schools, yeah? There's no, with this word explain, that requires a big thing, right? So when you're starting to use these words, you've got yourself an open question. Not hard at all anymore. So when you're thinking the student, I don't know this student, they won't say much, I can't, I can't get information out of them. I said, do you understand it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You start, just use some of these key words and there's more and then you get them talking more about things. Is a question. Oh, yeah, um, is it using, aside from the how and the why, um, aside, um, instead of using those two common, commonly used... Wait a minute, are you going to give me a new one? Can we wait until we get to you? Yeah, no, no. Okay. What I mean to say is that, um, is it all right, I mean, is it easier to ask open-ended questions if you're going to use action words like explain, share, teach, yeah. uh, demonstrate, perform, like those, start with them with that name. It will, uh... That's the point. Use these words and you've got yourself an open question. Okay? We, we still, we're going to keep on going though because there's more, more words to learn and there's more tricky words like how that can be used both. I think we're over at Fred, are we? Yeah, yours. Discuss uh, steps to publish. Thank you. Discuss is another one. Okay? Discuss. Nice. Next. Can you explain why it's important to share scholarly with participants? Good. All right. Is this an open or a closed question? Closed. I'm glad you brought this up. It always comes up. This is a closed question. Can I? No. I can't. Can I? Yes. Because you put can I, you've turned it into a closed question. Ask me that question again, Piwin. Turn it into an open question. Have a look at that. Can you explain, doesn't matter what you add on the end of that, how can you re-ask me that question so it's an open question? Have a look at that. It's, the answer's here. The answer's here. Have a look at this. I'll give you a hint. You need to take away two words. Which are the two words you need to take away? Well done. Well done. If we get rid of that, remember? Turns it into an open question. Yeah? I'm glad we're doing this because now you can see the subtlety. It, there's not much in it, is there? There's a word or two in it. But it makes a very big difference when you're communicating to people the answers you're going to get. And words in communication are very important. Can I explain? No. Yes. If I take off those can I and just say explain to me, well, then I now have to start talking about things. Make sense, friends? Yes, okay? And that's why we're doing this exercise so that these things actually come up and we can identify the differences. Otherwise, we, we can't identify the differences. Good work, Pewin. Next, your turn, Graham. How could improve my communication skills? How can I improve my communication skills? All right, again, we're using that sensitive word, and that's fine in this case. We could have gone, explain to me how we can use, but that's still fine. That's a closed question. That's all right. Re say it so that it's open. There's only two words in there that need to go. 
Well done. Did you see that, friends? That's what learning is. Okay? We identified the error and we fixed it. And now you've learned. And it's simple, two words. That, that was all the difference, all the difference it was. Well done. That now turned it into an open question. Good work. Good. All right. Open or closed question, friends? Come on, tell me. Is that an open or closed question? It's a closed question. Why is it closed? Yeah. That's all. I can say yes or no. And what was at the back? The will I. David, this... Will I tell you? No, I won't tell you. <laughs> oh, yes. How can I change this so that this can become an open question? How? What, what do I need to take away from this? Will I? If I just take this away and you say to me, Joe, tell me... Do, 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 do. Open question. See the difference, friends? So there are certain words you shouldn't say if you want to ask an open question. You shouldn't ask, can you, will you, all these turn it into a closed question. And it's good that we're saying these now because we're bringing it up. Well done. Next. How many skits do I have? Again, we're using that how word. And we're doing this. Open or closed question? Closed. Because I'll just give you a number. Definitely closed. Can you see? Anything with a quantity is a closed question. How many times have you been to Fiji? How much chocolate do you like? How many or how much? Closed question. Do you understand why? Exactly, yeah. But you, you made us aware of that. So it's good that you made us aware of that. Next. Good. Describe. Well done. All right. We have another one, another key word. Why? Tell me, explain, discuss, describe what type of person you are. Whereas if he said, are you a good person? Close question. Are you able to tell me what type of person you are? Close question. Will you tell me what type of person you are? Close question. Describe what type of person you are? Open question. Can you see the difference there? Yeah? Okay. For those that are actually studying via video, because this will be taped and studied via video, my best advice to you is actually ask people some questions and see their responses. If their responses are long responses, you've asked them an open question. If they're just answering you very short with yes, no, good, bad, hot, cold, you've asked them a closed question. So you're in here too and you're actually seeing our buzzwords so you know which words to use. But just like our group here, until you put it into practice, you're not going to know. So make sure you ask some people, ask your friends, your family members at home, and that's when you'll know whether or not you're asking open and closed questions. Sounds good, team? Good, and it's good to know we're also helping some of the people that will be learning from this as well. All right, who are we up to? My friend, go for it. Briefly describe about EE. <laughs> briefly describe about EE. Okay, can we possibly not use the word briefly and just use describe, yeah? No, no real need to add something like briefly because it, it's making something an open question that should be long and trying to kind of step back a little bit by saying briefly. So you, you're getting there with describe. Yes. Pratima. Your turn. Come back to you? Okay, I'll come back to you. Chippy. Okay. That's fine. Present me or tell me a funny story. I'm going to take that. All right, that's good. Who's next? Define your own words. 
Okay, did we hear that? What was that first word he used? Define. Define. That's a good word. Define in your own words. Define. It means that I have to, wow, suddenly I have to think of how to explain something. So it's almost like using the word explain, but it, it's, it's perhaps even, even more. It's a richer word than explain. So can you see how we're building up here a word list? Or what I call buzzwords to help you ask open questions. Robert. What is your plan for business? What is my plan? Okay, coming back up to here, it's good. It's good. It's still an open question, but can we use some of these to re ask that question instead? Which would you pick? If you were to use one of these to re ask that question, which would you use? Robert? Could you pick one of these to ask that question again? Do you want to help him out? Tell me. Tell me, yeah. Tell me or explain to me. So try and get away from the what because what can be used not as well. But if you use tell me, describe to you, explain to me, then that's, that's a much better phrased open question. Good work. Colin. Explain to me why is the symbol? <laughs> Couldn't help himself, could he? <laughs> uh, well done, Colin. That was a good open question. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like it. I like it. Next. Share with me. Good. <coughs> All right, share with me. Next. Good, good. Keep on saying it. I, I can't hear you from there. Speak up a little bit louder. How can I demonstrate my computer? Is, is that what you said? Okay, again, how can I, maybe not, okay, but explain to me how to use the computer, that's good, yeah? You know the difference there? That's making me then have to use more words. Good stuff. Next person, I can't see your name tag, I'm sorry. Ken. Can I elaborate? What's that? Elaborate. Closed. Oh, sorry. Kindly elaborate. You're, you're nice and polite. All right, good stuff. We've got a new word, right? Elaborate. Okay, elaborate, which means you know, give me more information. Well done, good. What? Share my experience, yeah? Can you see how it doesn't matter what she says at the after share? It doesn't matter what you say after any of these words. That's why, Roy, when you said to me, you kind of didn't finish the sentence, didn't need to finish the sentence. Because as soon as you start it with a, a, a certain word, it, it turns it into an open question. It doesn't matter what comes after that. Good. Are you going to Am I going to... Close this afternoon. Co sorry, <laughs> it's a closed question. That's a closed question because you said, am I going to? So I can answer yes or no. How can we turn that into an open question? Help, it, help him out, team. How will, you spend your time this afternoon? how will I spend my time this afternoon? D describe how you'll spend your time this afternoon. Share with me how you'll spend your time this afternoon. Good, open question. Mary. Is it Mary? Yes. Your turn. I'm going to come back, okay? Have one ready. I'm going to come back to you, Mary, and I'm come back to you, Pratima. I don't forget, okay? Good. All right, Ruth. <laughs> why did the congregation fall asleep? Okay. A why. That's fine. A why is an open question. 
Tell me a funny story. Good. We're starting to understand what words to use. Tell us how your parents get to Australia. Good. Tell us how your parents get to Australia. Good. Or explain, because I can just say by boat. So that needs a little bit more explanation. Camille. Describe the funniest moment of my life. Good. Tell me about your conversion. Nice. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good, isn't it? Wow, give me 10 reasons. Can you see how that's different than can you please give me 10 reasons? And, and if you ask can you please give me, it turns into a close question. It sounds very polite, but it doesn't solve uh, the, the issue of a closed question. But as soon as you just say, give me 10 reasons, or t then it turns it into an open. So give me <laughs> however many, it doesn't matter. That's, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. All right, I'm coming back to, my, to Pratima. Excuse me. Yes. If, if the question is, give me one reason, Open or All right, good question. Let's, let's, let's look at that. If he asks, give me one reason, is it an open question or a closed question? No, 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 no. Give me two reasons why. Open question, closed question. Yeah, it, it depends, doesn't it? Because it depends how long those reasons are, isn't it? Whereas, give me 10, open or closed? Open, because there's so many, yeah? So I think it's fair to say with something like that, your number has to be big. Okay, it does, right? If you give me one or two, it can be kind of small, but maybe after your four, five, six, it requires more words, right? Generally speaking, more words you say in your question requires more words you answer. Right? Okay. Um, Pratima. Wonderful. Good. Thank you so much. You used it, the describe. And we're over to Mary. Mary's turn. <laughs> Very original. <laughs> Mary's was the, the first diagnostic question. Suppose you were to die today. <laughs> It's still a closed question though, yeah? How about we help Mary out? Um, heaven, if I say, explain heaven to me, Mary, then that's an open question. Does that make sense? Whereas if I say to you, can you describe heaven to me? Closed question. But if then I say, Mary, when we finish up tonight at dinner, can I sit next to you? Describe to me heaven. It means that you have to actually start telling me all these different words about heaven and what heaven's like and all the things in heaven. That's an open question. Does that, does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah, I'll ask you about heaven later, okay? <laughs> I'll answer that first diagnostic question. Question here. A question under an instruction. Yes. Because some of the words to me um, are giving instructions and someone asking questions. For example, explain, discuss, describe, elaborate. To me, my understanding is they are giving instructions as opposed to how, what, where those words are actually asking questions. Can you clarify? Yeah, okay. It, it's a good point that you make, all right? What Roy is saying is that is there a difference or there seems to be a difference between questions versus instruction. So a question is how, what, where, when, why and an instruction is tell me, explain to me, right? It, it's correct to say that yes, it's an instruction um, and technically it might not be a question, no. Okay, technically. So when you go home and do your grammar, it wouldn't be considered a, a question. But then when we are in reality and we have to apply these things, it is the term that is generally given 
four open and closed questions. Does that make sense? When w out there, we have to give terms to things in order to understand them. And so, Roy, although it's technically not correct, it's correct in the setting in which we use them. Does that make sense? Okay. So we, we, have, to, we have to give it a little bit of grace, yeah? We, we say in Australia, you take it with a grain of salt. All right? So it means that we're not going to be rigid the exact total meaning of it, but we need to be a little bit flexible with our, with our meanings. And so in this way, that's more flexible. It's easy for me to teach you a concept that has alliteration, open, closed, three Ms, rather than say we're going to learn a closed question and an instruction. Much harder. Okay? So we need to use simplify it for the terms, for the purposes of learning. Does that make sense? Okay. Friends, I'm impressed. We're at five o'clock, we're on time, and we've gotten through what we need to get through by Monday. So well done. Yeah, you, you can actually be happy about that. <laughs> There's one thing though we're going to do before we leave and it'll only take a few minutes. You know, half an hour, an hour ago, you wrote down what you thought matter was. You remember that? It's on the other side of this. And I promised we would come back and I'm a woman of my promises, so we're going to come back. We have to look at these and I need you to tell me whether they fit in matter. We're just going to go yes, no, yes, no, okay? So, so far we've learnt that matter is all the stories and information, it's all the illustrations, it's all the words that you use, it's, all the, it's the questions that you ask as well. Make sense? Knowing what we've just learned, now we have to come back here and see if this belongs in matter. It's either yes or no. You need to call out the answers and we need to do this fairly quickly. Does that make sense? Okay, so we don't need to put our hands up for this. You just need to call out yes, no, yes, no. All right. Intention. Yeah. Vague. Vague, yeah, I think it's more of a no. Sound. No. Pronunciation. No. Yes. Yes. Oh, the class is divided. Hands up if it's a yes. Hands up. Okay. Give me an explanation of why it's a yes. Okay, because it's coming out of your mouth. I like that. Does anybody want to add to a yes? Because it's the words? Okay, if you pronounce it differently, it can mean something else. Those are the people that said yes. Ha hands up those who said no. It, it was half of you at least. Hands up. It was more than just three or four. No. Who thinks it's a no? Vic, why is it a no? Okay, why is it a no? Sorry, Rusia. All right, I can see where the class is divided. Camille. The way you're saying it, not what you're saying. All right. One, one group of people are thinking pronunciation is how you say it. Yeah. And another group is saying, but it's an actual word. Okay, now, um, when I, I went to America, and I spent some time in America, loved America. I thought it would be so, almost the same as Australia. It's not, it's very, very different. One of the things that are different is their accents, how they pronounce words. Yeah? How they pronounce words. Um, the word, for example, the end of a letter, say, better. The word better. Here's an, here's an American in... Better. 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 Okay. 
For, for, for Jeff over here, say the word better, Jeff. Better. 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 Happier. Whiter. Okay? E-R is er, er, er. For an Australian, it's ah. That's how it should be pronounced better. That is the proper pronunciation. An Australian pronounces it like that, better. Is it the same word? No. When I say better and when Jeff says better, is it the same? It's a word, okay? However, wow, this is so much better. Yeah, I suppose it's better. How I said that was manner, not pronunciation, okay? So I can see where you're coming from completely. It's fine tuning. But pronunciation is accent, which is still words. So I'd put it in the matter category, yeah? How I say it with different inflections in my voice, that's more manner. Not as much pronunciation, because I might pronounce a word differently, but it still has the same meaning, yes? That makes sense? In Australia, we say aluminium. In America, they say aluminium. Same thing. I say orange, they say orange. Different pronunciation, same word. So let's just keep that in words, huh? Doesn't make a big difference now anyway. All right, moving on. Instruction. Yes. yes, it's the stories, the content, how you give the instruction, no. But the words to the instructions alone, if I opened up a book, an instruction manual, all the words in there are matter, right? So the instructions are all matter. Good. Feelings? No. Yeah, but the feelings themselves aren't. All right, good. Noise. Noise. Why is it a yes, Roy? It's a sound. Is it a word? No. You understand? Sounds is not a word. Okay? Laughter. Laughter, no, I have a question over here. Okay, you need to phrase that question a little bit different for me. You just said when it comes to an illustration and there is a noise. Give me an example. So you're going to have to give me more words now because I wasn't here for a film last night. <laughs> um, can I help you? Is, is this correct what you're talking about? Well, for example, yes. um, someone was trying to go <laughs> as a puzzle. Pa, pa, pa. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, pow, 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 <laughs> are not really words. <laughs> okay, so how you say <laughs> pow, 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 different story, okay? So it's a sound, but it's how that sound is conveyed, and how that sound is conveyed is not words, it's still sound, okay? You're, I don't expect you to get this concept 100% yet. All right? Because we haven't learned matter and method yet. But by this time tomorrow, you will identify the differences. And they, they're subtle, but you will be able to know why that, that doesn't go there. I mean, this is not a test, though. You know, you're not going to not get into heaven because you said the wrong matter. You, you know what I'm saying? So these little things, too, are, aren't big issues. But it's important that we can identify why they're there. But generally, pow, pow, bang, bang is not 
proper words. They're what we might have made up along the way for Hollywood, but they're not words that give proper meaning and definition. Does, does that make sense? Okay. All right, so moving along, we're going to go along faster. Questions? Yes. Emotions? No. no. Definition? Yes. Uh, reflection? No, no, no. It's just our thoughts talking. Yes. No. The words we say, yes, but how we speak, no. We'll learn more about it tomorrow. I can see your eyes. You're like, I don't know, Joe. I think you might have that wrong. <laughs> By the end of tomorrow, you'll be able to see why I've done what I've done here. Uh, laughing. No. no, that goes in manner. It doesn't go in matter. Ideas? Yes, yes there's words. That's right. Singing and music? No. Exactly. Yes and no. We'll leave that and continue on. A story? Yes. yes. Dancing? No. no. True or false? No. Anger? No. no. Frustration? No. no. Um, dancing? No. no. Message? Yes. yes. Good tone? No. no. Whistling? No. no. Arrangement? No. no. That's one for method. Okay, that goes all the way in method. All right. Um, I can't even read my own writing. Intonation? No. no. Uh, murmuring? No. no. Again, you would say, but what happens if you murmur? Murmur is not a word. It's just a murmur. Yeah? Um, whipping? No. no. Babbling? No. no. Well, you know, if you've got a lot of words, yeah, if you've got a lot of words and you're babbling with a lot of words, that could be matter. Um, Volume. No. No. Encouragement. No. It's an emotion. It's the words to encouragement might be, but encouragement itself isn't. Barking. Barking. No. Sound. Gestures. Affirmation. Well, not not actually rejoicing. No, shouting, active, listening, words, language, language, yes, because of the words that we use, there's a question, yeah, there should be a tick, with which one? Okay, we're getting picky. I mean, the actual thing of affirmation, no. The words that you use, yes. But affirmation per se, no. Oh, I know you're tired. I know you're restless. I know you, I can see stretching. Is that, a, is that a question or a stretch? It's a bit of both, isn't it? You can do both at the same time. Go, Kata. Sorry? Feedback, yes. If there's feedback includes words, so yes, that's matter. I would include that. Answers, Answers yes, absolutely. Clarity. Yes. So does it fall as well under matter of the clarity? Well, we kind of covered that. Like when we say definitions and things have to be clear, the words that you use, and they have to be words that people understand, that falls under clarity, yeah? Well, team, I know you're restless. That's because it's, it's time. Opinion. Opinion. Not per se, but the words we use, yes. You can, we can add a lot more in here, but we're not going to. What we've covered here are the main points that you're going to use when we're teaching, okay? It are the points when I'll say to you, do you have a personal story? No? you need to improve your matter. What is important is that you have a better understanding of what matter is and just now you did a very good job at being able to go yes, no, yes, no. Okay, there are some maybes there but generally speaking you were able to identify yes, no, yes, no. Did, did you notice that, friends? You did that. 
which means that you're already starting to clear your mind of what it was, which is quite a bit messy and, and not in the right order. And now we're putting it into nice little categories so that I can critique you in each one. Today was a big day, okay, and I know there's a lot of new concepts. Tomorrow will also be a big day, but it will be a different day. Tomorrow we'll finish off the two M's, and there's a lot more activities for you. We'll be doing a lot more games, and there's a lot more interaction. You really only stood up once today. Tomorrow I'm getting you that next step up so that you're able to come out tomorrow from your tables and start taking centre stage. So I'm going to be preparing you for the next step. There's going to be a lot more interaction, so there's not as much sitting down, and you'll learn the next two M's so that you are able to be the trainer, so that when your friend is up here teaching, you'll be able to straight away say, this is how you were on matter, this is how you were on manner, and this is how you were on method you'll be able to say what needs improvement. We'll do that in a day. Question, it's five o'clock now on Monday afternoon. Do you think you know more now than you did at 9 a.m. this afternoon? Yes. Yeah. I would agree with you. And I've just been watching you and you're showing me that you have learned. That's the aim. That's what we're here to do. So you've done the aim, yeah? Well done, I can say to you well done because you've picked up these concepts, yeah. Can you imagine how much more you're gonna know by 5 p.m. on Friday if this is what you've just picked up within one day? So what we'll do, friends, is there's no homework tonight. So well done. It's the only night this week where there's no homework. So enjoy tonight because it will start off. By the end of tomorrow, Friday, so Tuesday at 5 o'clock, you all have the lesson plans that you need to start preparing and you all have different illustrations that you will be demonstrating as well. So there's a lot that's going to happen in 24 hours' time. Enjoy tonight. But I'll leave you tonight to have some rest. We'll pray before we leave, but well done, team. I think it's fair to say you were probably the, the quickest of all the groups that we have. And I don't just say that because I say that to every group. I, trust me, I don't say that to every group. Um, but you're certainly picking up things at a, at a quick speed. And it's impressive. So I look forward to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's an exciting day. And it's when we get to have more of our koala bears toys. I'm going to bring some chocolate as well so we can have some special time with chocolate and, and we can enjoy the rest of tomorrow. Let me just end in prayer before we leave though, okay? Father, I just want to thank you for today. Lord, you know, six hours ago we prayed and we asked that you would bless us. We asked that you would help us to learn and we have done that. And so we want to honour you and praise you for that and just acknowledge your help in being able to do that. Thank you that you've taught us new things. Help us to retain that information. Father, I just think right now of some of us that aren't feeling well. Lord, I think of Miriam and how she's not well and just ask that you put your healing hand upon her and you restore her and give her uh, strength tonight. That she might be here tomorrow. Lord, I ask that you continue the healing process on Sammy's tooth as he recovers from surgery. Lord, for the rest of us who just, just aren't feeling the normal way we feel, a sore throat or some, some problem, some ailment, Lord, I just say we're here for you and we need to be healthy. So I ask for your healing hand upon us. And I ask that you would give us wisdom, that we do the right thing, whether we sleep at proper hours and eat the right food so that we, we do the right thing to help you in that. Lord, bless these people as they go today, Lord. Bless them for their willingness to learn today. Give them good rest that we might come back tomorrow and as a team we might learn and continue to do work for your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, team, and I'll see you again tomorrow.